I guess I, in my head, I was like, I wasn't even really going to dig into the game per se. I was more thinking. But you of were like going to say some experience. salacious ass shit and it was going to cause and it's going to open up a can, open yes. up a can of cheese. Correct. See, and, okay. and also, I feel like the Tropical Freeze discussion would be good uh, for the second episode because I've got some thoughts on revisiting games and nostalgia and memory. Let's <laughs> so fucking go. There you okay. go. Because well, I can that I the ahead, thoughts that I did not have until I played Custom Robo today. <laughs> this is going to be real good. This yeah. that is a conversation in and of itself. Everybody. Welcome to Pursuing Pixels. My name's Kevin Portelli, and I'm here tonight with John Hines. Hi there. And Randall Nolery. Hey, folks. And we are back, as always, to talk about some video games, and mm-hmm. we're actually uh, we're cramming in a little uh, double episode session tonight. We uh, we got so many games that we've been talking about since the last time, uh, or that we've been talking about, that we've played since the last time we've gotten together. Um, Randall and I have sunk up for a, a kind of a pretty extended online gaming session. Yeah. That we'll probably kind of start off with, but then John and I uh, also sunk up with our uh, bandmates. We've been kind of, I don't know if we've mentioned it on the podcast or maybe it's like come up in a save it for the cast, but I feel like we've, at least in passing, like we've talked about with Randall, how like we keep saying like, oh, we got to sync up with Glenn and like play because he just moved out to Seattle, one of our uh, former bandmates or still bandmates. Yeah. Um, and we're just like, oh, we got to sync up and play games. And then we finally actually followed through and did it uh, over the weekend, I think, or ju- no, just the other day. Yeah, it was um, Tuesday. Yeah, geez, this week, all my know, this week, like, this has been a long week jumbled a series of long weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. But uh, but yeah, why don't we uh, get started with uh, something that we've all played? Uh, Randall and I, like I said, uh, sunk up and actually played some of this online together. But John also picked up. We all picked up the new uh, Super Mario Strikers Battle League. Is that it? I keep like forgetting. Uh, it actually, the last it's second. not Super. It's just Mario Strikers That's right. Battle League. That's right, and the, there might be a reason why they dropped that Super Bowl. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll know, we'll, we'll get into that, that in just a second. That was um, as I think we've talked about it on the podcast before. <laughs> the original Super Mario Strikers, right. or we've we've had at least touch on it. Oh yeah, um, in passing because that's one of at least my. I think it's one of yours, Randall, and yep. even John. Like it's one of our favorite, just kind of multiplayer competitive couch party games. I guess like no four doubt. player party games. I guess now we can play up to eight players. Um, with the new uh, Strikers game. And uh, yeah, there's quite a few changes. And there was a version of Strikers on the Wii as well. I think it was Mario Strikers Charged. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had my complaints about that one. I, I kind of feel, just to give my like vague first impressions... Uh, and then I'll toss the ball over to you guys. Kick the ball over to you guys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unless you're <laughs> so Wario. Lame. Yeah, you know, or unless you're like half the characters <laughs> in the game. Um but uh, but yeah, I kind of I feel like this game made an improvement because I really was I kind of bounced hard off. Even though I played it quite a bit actually with my brother. Uh, but uh, Mario Strikers Charged on the Wii, I kind of bounced hard off that one. They just made some changes that like really unbalanced the game in a way that like I don't know. It just it didn't click with me quite right. And this one feels like it corrected the course a little bit. Like I'm not here sitting. I'm not on a Mario Golf tirade kind of <laughs> mood. Because, uh, yeah, I was half, I don't know, I went in not really knowing what to expect because I really liked Mario Tennis uh, Aces on the Switch. But then, yeah, golf has been a huge bust. And a lot of the Nintendo releases lately have just been kind of a mixed bag. Like, none of them have been bad, bad, really, but other than golf. Um, but they <laughs> but they just, like, they've left me, like, you know, just, like, being like, oh, that was fun and just kind of moving on to the next thing. And I sort of feel like that might happen with Strikers unless we can, like, get some some online stuff going as much as it it does feel like an improvement but how do you guys feel about uh the game after your time i feel like you've probably spent the most time with it randall out of the three of us because I, I have I know you but, had but i did talk about it last episode as well so you know that barring that in mind i don't know that my opinion changed on it too much from what i was talking about last time which i was you know i was and am uh, generally a fan of this game despite you know a few flaws you know it's maybe a little bit shallow single player wise but i kind of figured that going in to be honest yeah. i kind of baked that into my impression um but i i still enjoy the game for what it is yes it is a little bit more like technical i don't mind that i guess but i i also play a lot of technical sports games so 
maybe that's got a factor there somehow. Well, and um, it, maybe with even Elden Ring too, you know, you got like yeah. a lot of like really specific and perfect timing inputs. Like it might be like, okay, I'm right. just like using all the buttons on the controller regularly. So yeah, ready yeah. for it. That might be a factor too, but uh, you know, I'll save I'll save more talk on that until you y'all get a chance. I want to hear what John thinks. Yeah, yeah, I, I almost like forgot that we actually talked about that already and got like, I know, your first I, impressions because I went into this like after after what you had said, I I maybe like went into this with even too high of expectations because I really from what I had seen of the trailers and what I had seen in action, I was like, okay. OK, this is looking pretty good. It's looking like basically they're giving strikers the tennis aces treatment. And again, like I think we've talked about that on the podcast, too, where like the campaign. Yeah, take it or leave it or whatever. But as far as like the tennis gameplay, it's awesome, like really frenetic, fast paced, mm. like just I don't know. I, I really thought the gameplay was fantastic and it felt like, OK, they're giving they're doing the same thing with strikers here. But yeah, what, go, take it away, John. Well, yeah, we had touched on it, I think, last episode where Randall was going into, I think, how like the equipment worked in this game where, yeah. you know, each character yeah. has their own stats, but then you can fine tune them a little bit more to your play style by, you know, having they have so many, there's a lot of equipment, but like they yeah. all yeah. do a specific uh, like trade off where they enhance one stat and take away on another. So you can really fine tune on this like, OK, well. You know, I, I want to focus more on passing or shooting or speed mm-hmm. and like it does allow you to do that. And I, I I I haven't spent that enough time on doing that on every character because I also don't I haven't played every character. I don't know what it is the thing that I want to focus on. Right. But a, a thing that we did talk about in the discord a little bit was uh, I think. Kevin, you were, you know, lamenting the fact that you couldn't remap the controls on the game and like, yeah, how like there was a, a huge disconnect between, you know, you played the GameCube game so much and mm. like that's kind of baked into your brain. So then yeah, having- in specific, like there's there's the lob pass, which in on the GameCube version, you would hold down the left trigger. And I think you could even do like a lob shot as well, because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, you could like charge the goalie and then try to like chip it over them every once in a while. Yeah, um, it rarely worked, but I, you would try it way more often than it was worth trying. But um, but anyways, yeah, like I kind of that just made more sense to me. Or again, yeah, it's probably just baked into my brain to where like now there's two separate pass buttons. I do feel like a lot of time I am just thinking ab- about like what button do I need to press? Is it shoot? Is it pass? Because even the shoot button isn't where I would want it to be. Um, just every every button feels like it's in a spot where like it's just I have to think about what what I want to do and then press the button like it has yet to become you know, second nature. But to be fair, I haven't played it a ton. I've really just had kind of the a little bit of playing before I sunk up with Randall. And then, you know, we played for maybe like an hour and a half, two hours, mm. maybe max. Yeah. And and I do think part of it is the fact that, you know, these games came out with a pretty big. Yes, they are part of a series like but they came out on three wildly different systems. And yeah. Nintendo has proprietary control schemes and controllers <laughs> yeah. for every generation that Same like time. if it's a game that you know isn't a, a mainstay like Smash Brothers or Mario Kart which is on literally every system that right. they make that like yeah. there is you know if one game came out on GameCube the next one on Wii and the next one on Switch like those are three massively different controllers and if you're used to just playing the one that was you know came out over a decade ago or whatever like that's you're going to be like defaulting to that controller, which just doesn't exist anymore. And right. like, I think that's like, if it's something that you, you know, you had like really loved that one game, like that might be a bit of a stumbling block. But for me, like I had basically forgotten how to play the original strikers by the time that I played this one. And I was like, re- I was playing the tutorial sessions and I was like, okay, now I know how to play this game. And it like really wasn't an issue for me. But like, again, I really only played strikers when I was playing multiplayer, like with you, Kevin, like that's basically it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I basically, I think we've talked about this before on the podcast too. Like I, I had like three separate friend groups that got like really deep into that game, like our band Mm -hmm. and then Randall and I, and like our best buy crew. And then my band in high school, like we were like, like I was deep into like, got really heavy into playing strikers on GameCube a lot. So yeah, that is like 
kind of baked into my brain. And I guess I'll I'll go on a little tirade here about why <laughs> some of the things that I don't like about this game because there there are I do have a lot of complaints because right, I, I do fight. feel like <laughs> I do feel like they basically just like Smash Bros fied this game a little bit like to the point where like so one of the things in like the very first Strikers like only the captain could strike and they could strike at any time that they wanted to as long as they were over midfield just like any normal shot like you can't take a shot unless you're over midfield but you would have your captain and then you'd have three minions they'd all be like toad or hammer bros or koopas or whatever whoever you picked as like your or birdos i think was the other option Mm -hmm. but like those characters couldn't do the super strike only you know i would i pick peach all the time so like peach only peach could do the super strike but you could do it at any time so it was all about like the threat of like is it worth like tackling these players if you're playing with especially if you're playing uh with a partner or whatever like or with a teammate like is it worth me like giving the other team a couple of items and like decking these enemies or the, t- decking the other team so that peach can take a wide open shot get the two points and it really like kept the game like within reach no matter how far behind you were the game was always in reach but now that you have to collect the essentially the smash ball to be able to like become activated and then anyone on your team can do a strike but like i I don't know to me that just like totally changes the the feel and flow of the game to where like I, I don't know. You you just don't feel empowered like you did before when you were behind. Like you always felt like you could mount a comeback. Where like in this game, you just it just it, it totally took that away in my opinion. Um, so I'm a little bit bummed about that. And then also like the way the speed burst works, it's like more of like uh like you kind of press it once and it like kicks the ball in like one of the eight. It's almost like an octo directional speed burst unless you're holding it down and then like it kind you get this like really wide like arcing turn like it just again it, it this is more of it uh oh it just feels different and i just don't like how it feels like that's pretty much the complaint <laughs> i have there but like in the old game i would be holding down speed burst the whole time and then letting it go to like finesse what i wanted to do where in this game it's kind of like you never want to hit speed burst at least the way i play and unless yeah. i like really want to just try to like move ahead of somebody like with one quick like maneuver essentially but I, but i don't know the game just feels again I, maybe i need if i play it enough and like the controls become a little more second nature and i can like make some of the moves but even like the one timers just don't feel as snappy and juicy like there's not as much slow motion to like the like going into the shots or like the, i don't know i just i i, I most like i i was left feeling like i kind of don't like this game that much but <laughs> i don't hate it and i definitely like will happily play more of it especially again if i'm like syncing up with friends but like i definitely i i really could like just keep griping like i feel i find it really hard to like even distinguish between like who unless you pick yoshis on your team because they their whole body changes color which is great. i find it really hard to like tell who's on my team at any given time and who's on the other team like again it was easier when it was just like oh give me peach and a bunch of birdos like i I don't know. The game was just be- it was better balanced when it was a simple arcade game and it wasn't like trying like Nintendo just can't let a game just be like, here's a slight update and tweak on an already good game that like has they have to add new mechanics in. And sometimes it's cool, but sometimes it just feels like too much. And I think in this case, it's too much for me. Like I the game would be way better. Like I liked in tennis. They gave you the option to play the like super battle tennis fights, but you could go back to classic mode and just play like a more chill tennis game if you wanted to. And like, I wish there was that in this game basically is all I wish. Oh, I was just going to say counterpoint. I don't have any of those issues. <laughs> so, like, just straight up. Like you're like, you're like making a laundry list of things. And I'm like, I don't notice any of those. Like, at yeah, all. it's, it's gotta be that it's just baked. It. Like, again, it is truly one of my favorite games ever. Yeah. So and, it, it oh, might that, just be that it's like, okay, I, I was really hoping that this was going to re- just like Mario golf. I was hoping it was going to replace the original game and just be like, okay, I've, I think I've said before on the podcast, the switch is my favorite video game system ever. So like in my, head i'm just like oh yeah give me all the definitive versions sure, of right. you know yeah. we got mario kart 8 definitive mario karts on switch yeah like pretty much every you know obviously there's tons of other great games on their other platforms but it kind of feels like especially with the online retro games like you can pretty much play all the nintendo classics on one system or you have the like breath of the wild like a totally new fresh take on a nintendo classic so it's like i don't know it just feels like a little bit of a bummer but but I do realize that a lot of it is just like ah, it's just not what I wanted it to be. You know, a lot of it is just me. But no, it's but not- th- I think that's absolutely fair. Like there there are definitely like 
you know, I'll play the new version of a, like, yeah, we played uh, Kirby in the Forgotten Lands, and I was like, yeah, this is a good game, but, like, it's not yeah. my favorite ki- Kirby game. And it's when I go play my favorite Kirby games, it's going to be on another system. And Yeah, I think, and like, I kind of wanted that one to be, I kind of wanted that one, too. And and that's, again, that's, like, maybe going in with way too much expectation to be like, I want this game to replace every other Kirby game in my <laughs> mind. I want this game <laughs> to replace my favorite multiplayer game of all time and be able to yeah. take it on the go with me and whatever. Like, you know, I'm not, it's not like Nintendo ruined the game. It's still a really fun game. <laughs> But I do, like, especially with games that do have complex control schemes like this, like, at least, like, having, like, a a couple options, even if you don't let a, them fully remap it. But, like, usually Nintendo even will have, like, a couple swappable, you know, here's control scheme A and B or something. Right. Um. So I was just, yeah. like, a little bit bummed that it's like, man, you really can't go to, like, a, a default control scheme or old school because they, they do that sometimes. I don't know. Even in like Metroid and stuff, I feel like they've done that. But. Yeah. It, it seems like a weird thing to not let you do for. Yeah. That yeah. in particular is definitely a, a very, very valid gripe. Like, just let us remap the buttons. It's, yeah. it's yeah, okay. Like virtually any, any game that can accommodate that. And again, I being someone who's never coded anything in my life, I have no idea how difficult that is. But any game that can accommodate remappable controls, I feel like should. And I feel like any triple a studio should probably be able to accommodate that yeah Um, yeah nintendo especially (laughs) yeah exactly exactly and especially because they seem to be a studio that like prides themselves on accessibility or like you know like everyone can play kind of thing so Mm -hmm. like you know the more people can play if you can have different control options but i don't know randall what do you want to weigh in on any of that uh any of those thoughts or anything yeah, before we move I mean, on to the next? And I, a little bit. Just, you know, I, I yeah. still really like this game. And I guess, you know, like John, it's even though I played a lot of Strikers then, it, I had mentioned even last time, it had been a very long time since I played Strikers since. So it just wasn't yeah. in my muscle memory anymore. I was I was prepared to absorb whatever the control scheme was now, and it was close enough to what I had remembered, which was obviously a dusty memory from 10 plus years ago at that yep. point. <laughs> you know so yeah. you know it felt it felt fine enough to me for that and i i do like the the smash brothers style gold ball thing and like oh shit go race for it and i don't honestly i don't mind that you know sometimes you're just gonna get wiped out like six one and that's the way shit goes sometimes in sports like that's yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's know? definitely true that it's more true to like the actual game you know yeah but- yeah, that's kind of yeah. I think that that was a huge part of the magic for me is like you always felt like you could make a comeback, and I, I do feel like they did take that away to a degree in this. To game. a degree, you still you can, yeah, still, but but then you know on the other side of the coin, if you go too far the other way, then people complain about things like rubber banding and Mario Kart and stuff like that, right? Yeah, so it's which like, which drives me nuts. To be fair, know, yeah, like the blue shells. It's like man, right. you really there's like no point of being in first <laughs> in right. Mario Kart for most of the race, you know, right. Right. So, you know, I still like it, but, you know, I, d- I definitely still want to play more of it. There's same to same. unlock and, you know, the the online seemed like it it ran smoothly enough once we kind of had a few matches under our belt. Like it, it seemed like it was all right, even though we yeah, were I think- practically across the country from each other. So that was cool. Yeah, and when we talk about our crappy internet, the internet that John <laughs> and I have yeah. all the time, you know, right. just it's it's not the best. I think uh we can we'll probably, get into that. <laughs> yeah, if we, well, if if we can transfer over to yeah. Turtles, if we're ready, we can, yeah. yeah, literally the whole entire time, Randall and I sunk up and played uh, the new Teenage Mutant, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. That's right. Um, geez, that's a mouthful. It is. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we sunk up and played that and pretty much the entire time, like I had a little like red ping logo in the bottom right hand <laughs> corner of the screen, but to be fair, I don't think we had like a single hiccup the no. entire time, like nope. not a stuttered frame. Nope. Not anything. And we were playing on uh, Game Pass. I, th- I think you were correct as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is a perfect so scenario because this is like an example where like I want to get the physical copy on Switch. I'm guessing yes. you're probably in the same boat. Yes. And I'm like, OK, but I want to play it right now. It's out yes. and the physical Switch isn't out yet. So this is like a perfect example of where like Game Pass just coming in in the clutch where it's like. Okay, it's just sitting there ready for me to play on day one. Yeah. Um, and I can wait, you know, and because, you know, impatience can definitely like if you're just like, oh, man, everyone's talking about the new Turtles game. I got to just buy it now. And then you're like, right. oh, I got to rebuy it now because I want the physical copy. Yeah. Um, and this is one that I really do want to grab a physical copy of. But, yep. man, like this is we were probably I don't know. We got maybe 
probably not even quite halfway through the game. Yeah. And I was thinking like, okay, maybe like I should probably get going to bed here. And it almost felt like the old times of like, I think I stayed up till like on my end, it was like 2 a.m. Oh yeah. You were up late. Here. Yeah. Like, and we just kept going like, let's, and we start, I think we jumped on at like 930. Again, we played strikers first and then jumped right. over to turtles. But I kept kind of feeling like every little like hump we got to was like, ah, oh, we're, it feels like we're getting close though. So like, let's yeah. just a few more levels, but yeah. it was a, it was a longer game than I expected for as many times as we said that, but man, did I have a blast with this game? And it's so cool to see like a, a brand new, well, number one, just a brand new turtles beat up game. That's like throwing it back to turtles in time and the yes. other like arcade classics, but that it's made by like an indie studio that's made a bunch of cool games that I've really enjoyed in the past. I know we've talked about Flint hook on the podcast. Yep. Um, I guess apparently we've talked about Mercenary Kings at some point (laughs) on the podcast, which this got me to fire that up again, which I thought was for the first time pretty much. But I guess, yeah, I I do have like a vague recollection of firing that up. And I'll I'll maybe touch on that in a little bit later. But a really cool, not just another really cool game, Steel Assault. I mean, they've just been kind of cranking out really awesome, like 16 bit, almost like 32 bit, like retro style pixel games. And it's just so cool to see like, yeah, like. We're getting like the Turtles game because, again, it's really cool. Like there's that Cowabunga collection coming out and I'm pumped to get Turtles in time and play the classics and whatever. But like it is cool to have a whole new experience like this and especially to see that like this basically got the Streets of Rage 4 treatment. Yes. uh, Which I know you're a big fan of that game as well. We're both big fans of that game as well. But yes. Um, yeah, from the same developers. Yeah, right. Dot Emu. Uh, Dot Emu, the, the same publisher anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm 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 also a big fan. I, I really really liked playing through this game uh, with you. I I think we had a really awesome time playing through this. Yeah, it, it's uh, I, you know we talked to, we mentioned Streets of Rage four. I would put this just basically one tier below that. But like, yeah, mm, probably my second favorite beat 'em up of this era. Uh, to be honest, like it's on that level. I was really impressed with what they put together here. Uh, it feels great to play. It looks like you said, like 32 bit sprite art style. It's very vibrant. It's very lively. You can tell the developers played the crap out of Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist and TMNT Arcade. And they watched like I was just the old say, TMNT yeah. movies and the cartoon <laughs> yeah, and all they, of those they... influences went into this thing. You can tell they watched the shit out of the cartoon and like yeah. even just like dug through like the action figures and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, there's like great. a lot of the characters that I'm yeah. like, ah, who is this again? Yeah. And I'm like, I, I pretty much just remember like my cousin having like, hey, I remember seeing that action figure oh, at my yeah. cousin's house. You so they were like, I think figures. taking some deep dives. Yeah, yep. Yep, of course. Yeah, no, it's, but it's, it's wow. It's good. It is so polished too. like just. Yeah, the presentation, they nailed it and it, it evokes a lot of the presentation of Turtles in Time, I would say, and the cartoon. Yeah, primarily. very much. Very, but but still kind of doing its own thing, because I, yeah. I did fire up Turtles in Time uh, for just a brief moment just to be like, I wonder how different it feels, because like when you're playing it. It kind of like other than it feels like there's like a few extra like moves. I like I think you can maybe you can double jump or there's just like a few like slightly more like specific moves you can do like or like the inputs to them feel like or maybe they were specific before, but I just didn't know what they were like how to throw how to like kind of grapple an enemy and throw them into the screen or right. slam them like there's just like kind of some more specific things. But there's even like little like just small level up like nothing crazy like it doesn't feel like. Like it honestly, like I think we did stick with our characters the whole time, the whole way through. Yeah. We're just like, oh yeah, we're leveling up, whatever. But I don't think it would have been like hugely detrimental if you were like, you know what, I want to play as Raph or no. I want to see what Splinter feels Not like. I don't think we would have yeah. like got demolished. Not to say it was an easy game. Um, no, no, but it I, didn't feel like punishing or anything either. And then no, I think they a ton of that. different difficulty settings. But yeah, it felt like it just felt like a perfect like way to spend the end of an evening and into yes. the morning. Like just like oh, let's just romp through this Saturday morning cartoon and like it, oh, it just like, yeah, they and the music, like, um, I know we mentioned the music at, and in passing, but like, there's a couple tracks where like even a couple of like the Wu Tang clan yeah. members Ghost have like a couple there, verses on there. Yeah. Like it's, Oh, it's so cool. And like, sometimes that stuff can feel out of place or a little try hardy or whatever, but not the case here. Like it just like it added to the energy of the game and it just really, uh, I don't know. It just it it felt so awesome. But I didn't I didn't even finish that thought about Turtles in Time. I did boot that up to see like oh, I wonder how different it feels. And it actually like 
it felt a little quicker than I anticipated. But yeah. like, so for here's like an example that's like a slight difference. Like in the new Turtles game, you can like double tap uh, in forward or back in any direction. Well, left or right to run, basically. Mm-hmm. In the original, you just have to be like walking in a direction for long enough and then you'll start running. Like I kept double tapping. I was like, why is this not working? And uh, which is kind of weird. Like, I feel like every beat em up uses the double tap yeah. to run. Yeah. Uh, even Kirby uses the double tap to run. Yeah. But uh, yeah, but I don't know. But the combat felt like I was kind of thinking as we played through uh, Shredder's Revenge, I was kind of like kind of like what I was saying about Strikers. I was almost thinking like, OK, yeah, this kind of almost replaces the old Turtles beat em ups. Like there's kind of no real need to play those again. Not not that they're not amazing, but just like, why would why would I not play this awesome one that has six players and that's a little fresher, you know? Right. But booting up Turtles in Time, like I just played up to, got, didn't even fight uh, him whatsoever, but got to Baxter Stockman and I was like, no, nope, there's still plenty of reason to play Turtles in Time. Like oh, it course. feels so snappy. The, as soon as the music, I was just like, oh, yeah, we are we are in for a treat like that. That game rocks like I forget pizza yep. time. Like, there, there's, oh, yeah. Little voice it's an amazing acting. game. Like yeah. it uh, like I don't know. It, j- it just made me almost appreciate that game even more. Like sure. I, I kind of like took Turtles in Time for granted almost. And now it's like, oh, we finally got another one. And it almost yeah, just made me appreciate at least that first level like, even more than I ever have before. But. I still got big ups for Hyperstone Heist too on, on being a Genesis kid. I think that game's also still excellent. Uh, yeah, but, it even has a little crossover, right? Yeah. In the levels, like I remember there being yeah. some of the some similar levels. Oh yeah, but uh, yeah, the the music is good in Shredder's Revenge. Uh, besides those names you mentioned, T. Lopez was the main, you know, uh, the one that, uh, that created this. He 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 wrote the soundtrack. He was the composer. Uh, he's the one that also did Sonic Mania's uh, soundtrack, oh, which is excellent. Dang. Um, so I'm, okay. I'm a T Lopez fan. Uh, I think he makes some really like great, lively, like retro inspired tracks. Lively is uh, a great way to put it too. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like, it, and it has that like retro feel, but it doesn't feel like it's like totally married to like, Oh, it's gotta be chip tune only. Like it obviously, yeah, oh, you, got, yeah. Like, <laughs> you got the Wu Tang rapping on oh, the yeah. tracks, but like, I, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. It feels very authentic, but at the same time, it just. Yeah, they just capture like this, like energy is just the right word. The game yes. just has so much vibrancy and energy, just like it just radiates. And I can I really want to play like because we I just played as Donatello. It just felt like ah, he's my favorite. Yep. I got to have that range. Yep. But like, or no, I played as Leo. I think yeah, you I played as Leo. Leo. I played, yeah, yeah, I played Donatello I in my yeah. yeah. I played Donatello when I just was like first starting up the game just to like check it out. Um, yeah. At first, but like now I'm like, yeah, we unlock Casey Jones yeah. and you got April and yeah. uh, Splinter and yeah, being able to play six players like it's definitely a game. And what were there like 12, 14, 16 levels or something? I want to say like- it was around, yeah, 14, 16 and a good like two hour session at least to, to complete, yeah, I think which it was feels like two, two and a half for yeah, a beat up. Yeah. yeah, it was like it because like, yeah, again, some of those like older beat em ups like I get I wasn't so much feeling that in the little snippet I played at Turtles in Time, but you can kind of feel that like, OK, this is just made to like just kick your ass to a degree that sure. like is, it's not fun. We're like, yeah, the balance of this just felt like, yeah, we're just kind of plowing through using some continues, but it's never crazy. No, and we didn't even figure out some of the mechanics where we could like high five each other and like regain two health like i think we like saw that at the very end when we went through like all the pages yeah. of the tutorial there's a lot but, like, of abilities can... yeah, yeah. And, like it's it's just cool those little touches of like leveling up your moves and yes um just having like a little more control over your move set like where it feels like a little bit more like a fighting game than a beat-em-up where without being too crazy you know you're not like doing hadoukens all the time or whatever but right you know, just just an awesome game. It almost feels like it's like not real, if that makes sense. Yeah, but, it's kind of wild that it exists. It's yeah. awesome. And it feels like it like they announced it. And then it was like one of those games that just like, I, I don't know. It just felt like, is it ever going to happen? I don't know. But yeah. Too cool. Too cool. It's great. Can't can't wait to play it again. And yeah, I, yeah, I think we talked about even trying to sync up with Tina on that. So that yeah. would be. Oh, yeah. Or on any any game for that She'd matter. But, that for sure. Yeah. But uh, I guess we can uh, roll the ball over to the session that uh, John and I had the other night with our uh, boss fight pals in the uh, band that we play in. Uh, we've been talking about having a game night for a long time. We finally sunk up and we actually tried doing Steam remote play for the first time. I've actually had like a few developers that have like that we've checked out their games and like, oh, I'll be like, oh, I wish I had, you know, could play multiplayer. I just don't have the best setup for it or haven't had anybody like for local multiplayer games. Like, oh, just try Steam remote play. And essentially the way this works is like, I'm assuming it's like almost like 
essentially like cloud gaming essentially and like one person's like hosting the game and everybody else is like streaming the game and that they're, they're, you're just basically like connecting their controller inputs into your computer oh, yeah that's cool through the cloud essentially is how it works but like when we first tri- we tried like a couple quick games on my computer like just some random indie multiplayer kind of party yes games um and it was like okay yeah this isn't working and we were like okay is it my internet is it my laptop is it some combination of the two and we immediately switched over to our buddy mikey uh and we basically i don't know i don't know what the difference in his internet is but he definitely has a better computer. We tried uh, it on mine too, and like, oh yeah, the internet also was just not. Oh yeah, I forgot it. we tried yours <laughs> first. Yeah, yeah, and John and I pretty much have the same. So yeah, we switched from apartment internet to condo internet, and we <laughs> <laughs> got a little upgrade. And uh, and yeah, so we ended up playing. Uh, we and we tried a few things, and yeah, we ended up trying Pac Man two fifty six on John's. Didn't have the best of luck. Switched over to Mikey's, but we were like, that seemed like it could have been fun. Let's give that a try without you know, having all the technical issues. And I, number one, I first and foremost, like we did hit some like choppy, you know, where it would freeze up for a quick second. Every once in a while. Yeah. But, uh, not, but nowhere near with random. the frequency that it was happening on your or my computer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like other than those moments. And again, I think if we maybe had like, if John and I had more stable internet connections and possibly better computers as well, mm-hmm. um, like the input delay is like, none non-existent it's like kind of insane like it's awesome I, maybe it would be a little different if we were playing something more like you know tower fall or you know playing a, something a little more actiony um but at least for pac-man 256 it felt like the exact second that i hit the button to turn or go in a different direction it, it activated it basically um but yeah if you're not familiar with pac-man 256 it's basically kind of i think it's made by the same development studio that made crossy road which is kind of like a voxel uh, art 3D frogger sort of. That makes sense. That um, makes a lot of sense. That yeah, that's why so there's that s- chicken in the yeah, game. For and the- that's one of the palettes <laughs> that you can choose for the stage as well. Oh, <laughs> I didn't oh. see that. Yeah, because there's like uh, it's very much like a mobile game in its design because I had actually played a little bit of it on mobile. That's where I was like, oh, why don't we check this out? Um, cause it's like, even on mobile, you know, you're just kind of swiping your thumb up, left, down or right. And it's almost like an endless auto runner kind of essentially you're like going trying to get as far as you can and just collect as many dots as you can get as high of a score as you can obviously you get more points for eating ghosts and then you like the way i really like the way the combo or scoring system works where like basically if you're eating the dots like in a connected chain like it goes you know you get one point then two points then three points and it just keeps multiplying like that Mm -hmm. or not multiplying but just going up one per but as soon as there's like a break in the chain like it's not necessarily like you got hit or anything like it literally they have to be like connected to one another um so you're kind of playing like cooperatively and competitively at the same time when you're playing multiplayer which i i just love that like you're trying to because you can revive one another yeah and like try to like get further into oh, the run but sweet. at the same time at the end of every run and you do you do have a cumulative score as well but at the end it still shows like everybody's ranking and what how many points everybody got there might even be a deeper breakdown. I wasn't paying enough attention, but it's still like, yeah, it just has that like we weren't I don't think any of us were really caring that much about who was winning each round or whatever. But I don't know, like it was very addicting. Like, I feel like we were like for a brief moment, somebody's like, should we play something else? And we were kind of like, yeah, no. And we we ended up jumping over to a different game. But I, I don't know, like all the different power ups and upgrades. And so I just read uh, like I was trying to you know get a little bit of background and it like it's based off of the fact that there is a glitch on level 256 that like ah. that's what the whole like part of the endless runner of 256 is that there's this ever encroaching like glitch of numbers that are coming up from the bottom of the screen so in addition to just moving forward like if you fall too far behind then the glitch will kill you in the addition kill screen. to like yeah and yeah. so but also a thing that we never apparently got to if you eat 256 consecutive dots all enemies get wiped from the screen. Ooh. Yeah. And I was like that was definitely something that we didn't get as a multiplayer thing where we were just going over each other's paths and Yeah, whatnot. just like overlapping left and right. Yeah, I don't think I ever but, saw anything over like 20 something on my end. Yeah, but that revive mechanic is was so fun because you know it's all of us like yelling at each other. Is like you got the one of us is alive and you're like, oh, I'm respawning right in front of you. Just <laughs> go that way. And then uh, it was such a great multiplayer game, and we kept like leveling up new power ups that we were getting. Like I was really pleasantly surprised with like 
how much I loved the game. Yeah, I was like definitely thinking of like next time. When are we doing this next? Like yeah. we got we got to do this again. Like it's it's a really fun and addicting game. And I I think you played a little bit of this as well via the Pac Man collection, Randall. Yeah, which that just came new, out recently. Yeah, that new Pac Man collection. Uh, I should have grabbed the name of it, but it's it's another Pac Man museum collection thing. Um, and it's got like all the pac-mans including some ones that i like remember playing as a kid but most people don't have a recollection of like super pac-man and stuff yeah. pac-man uh, museum plus there you go that's the one yeah so i played through that because that was on game pass on mm. xbox and when you guys had said like i just saw that you know kevin often because he's he's great at this as a host he'll do a, a list of preliminary things that we could talk about and i saw oh they, they played pac-man 256 looks like they played it together and in my head i didn't realize it was an actual multiplayer game i just figured oh you guys took turns on runs or whatever while you know ah, just hanging out yeah i yeah, didn't realize even multiplayer that. pac-man yeah it was just taking turns on the right. arcade yeah but like I just played it single player and I had a great time playing it that way is like, oh, my gosh, this is just feels really good. Like, yeah. I, I love yeah. how this plays like it just it's probably one of my favorite Pac-Man games. And yeah. I played most Pac-Man games. Uh, it just feels great. I love the power ups like mm-hmm. the laser power up. Laser is so good. So laser. Good. It's, it's great. A, it's almost overpowered, but it's amazing. It's, amazing. it's not overpowered because as soon as it runs out, you're just like, oh, shit. It just like it feeds into your like risk reward tendencies so much, right? Like just mm-hmm. the playing yeah. it and like the the run of it, it just matches up so well with the gameplay of Pac Man. It's no longer about eat all of the dots on a given set screen. It's about eat as many dots as you can before you die. You know, yeah, and making quick decisions and like a little bit more of like the, you know the ghosts have like certain behavior. Like the pink mm-hmm. ghosts are like. I, I know yeah. they all do, but like the pink ghosts are very much like they don't move until you're in their line of sight yeah. and they move until they hit a wall and stop. And like, so it's like, it's a little bit, not puzzly, but like, yeah, you're, you are able to like kind of read your surroundings a little bit and like, okay, okay, I gotta, I can't turn right. Cause I'm going to trigger, I'm way too close to that pink one. And it's just going to, you know, as soon as I trigger it, it's going to kill me. Well, and sometimes um, and, there's gaps between the dots too, right? So you want to yep. make sure you're taking paths that keep your multiplier going, that you're getting as many dots in a row and keeping your streak alive, you know? So yep. that also plays into it while you're trying not to die from the ghosts that are in your way. And, Oh, there's a power up over there or a, you know, the pellet that I can eat to, eat the ghost you know do i want to risk going over there to to get it or not it's it's fun it's really good it's just such a simple twist but it like turns the game to something so different i love it yeah it's all it's almost like a guy because i think we talked a little bit too when we were playing the other night like talking about pac-man uh 99 on switch and i think we talked about that on the podcast like I think I said something along the lines of like, yeah, this is like the best take on Pac-Man. And like, maybe I've just forgot about 256, but both of them are honestly like, yeah, it's like you don't this kind of almost not proves my point, but it kind of echoes my point that I was making about Strikers. Like it just needs a little twist. It doesn't need like a full overhaul. You just need to take the core gameplay and just like give it a little tweak. Although (laughs) they're adding a lot here. I mean, yeah, in Pac-Man, you don't have any weapons or upgrades or I mean, there's like it looked like there was like, what, 40 different upgrades you can eventually get. Like it seemed like there was a lot lot. of lot on that menu screen. So it's that's really the only complaint I would level at it. Maybe is like it just felt like a but little. But you can bit only mobile-y. have three at a time. Like, yeah, like and you're four, unlocking maybe? a new one. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess I just mean like in the sense like it's like okay, well it would just be nice if if all those things are going to be available eventually. It would just be like nice to have them as opposed to being oh I got to play for twenty hours before yeah. I get this. But at the same time, if it is like if it becomes like hey this is our like four player. Let's yeah. get together when for boss fight hangs and just shoot the shit while we play Pac Man. Right, and it used I'm to be all, a free to play that. thing. So like they were trying to like incentivize you by you know, oh you had credits like that you had to use in order to play your runs and mm. so uh, I I like this version of it more. I think yeah of yeah because yeah I'd only the, I'd only played a little bit of it on mobile before and like I don't I honestly don't even remember there being those power ups. I just remember it being like a high score chaser. So maybe they've tweaked it quite a bit since then, but. Yeah, I even assumed like the 256. I just assumed like, oh, that's probably like, you know, Mario 64. I was like, maybe that's how many bits there are in a voxel or something. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. but that's cool. Um, and yeah, just all the different visual options. Just, uh, I don't know. Just a really cool game. Really cool take on Pac Man. Yeah. Loving these it's fresh, very good. Uh, fresh, like Remixes. retro or neo retro updates. Yeah. Yeah. Very into it. Very into it. 
But I don't know. Any more uh, multiplayer chat before we uh, wrap up? Golf with friends. Oh, God. Yeah. Do we want to talk about that at all? <laughs> I mean, it was fun. Like, it was a good, like, it was definitely a winding down. Like, after we had, you know, had yeah. the high score chasing, like, uh, us, like, yelling at each other cooperative. Then we just had our sit around, dick around, and play uh golf to, what is it even is it golf i think it's just called friends? golf with friends or something yeah, yeah it might be golf, golf with, with your friends. friends sounds right yeah, yeah. and yeah it, like we didn't do any of the like apparently it's got a huge modding scene and like you know tons of like stages that you can did we just did the first one we could find and did not bother to read the controls and we're trying to figure out how to play the game while we were all god probably not in any state to like learn a new learn game. a new game and like especially while you're like talking to because that's like yeah that's one thing too i'm like well yeah like my first time with strikers too it's like i was digging in kind of well chatting and catching up with randall so it's like okay maybe if i really dedicate a full session to just like learn the game and get it into my brain you know maybe i'll have a better yeah. reaction but yeah it, it, you're right though it was like the per because i was kind of dogging on the game the whole time but mostly just to get under mikey's skin oh yeah um but uh <laughs> golf with your friends it's golf called. with your okay okay friends. Oh, you, you need your to own friends. your yeah. friends yes yeah and you can't uh you can't play it with anyone else <laughs> that's um, it but yeah it, it was it was the perfect wind down game just like oh let's just shoot the shit and like not care at all but apparently like mikey and his buddies get pretty competitive or not him particularly but his buddies get pretty competitive about it because i was like who, who would play this game and he, all he the reviews like, are like this is a perfect like drunk lan party game or like, yeah just like okay. ruining your friendship game like i was like ah yes this is the exact audience for people who just want a like straightforward no frills like and it does allow for like like you know you can hit it out of the course and stuff oh, yeah. like that and like you know you can be an idiot if you want to so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't even figure out what the jetpack button did we just saw yeah. that it was what? on the controls yeah, we were looking at the controls and it's like jetpack jump and we're like what <laughs> um, okay otherwise this just feels like a normal kind of like it's very like normal what very like nice for? looking but like nothing fancy 3D putt putt game yeah <laughs> in first person you know. Nothing fancy, but mm -hmm. that's great. Yeah, I think we can uh, wrap up the uh, multiplayer chat there. Yes, um, and yeah, as always, uh, you can find us on the internet at pursuingpixels.com. As we're everywhere over the internet, I've been doing a bunch of streams lately, checking out all sorts of games. Uh, I haven't done any of these multiplayer streams really, uh, obviously, but I would be down for maybe syncing up for something like that. That could, yeah. that could maybe be fun too. So maybe stay tuned for some of that. But, uh, one way or the other, we'll be on the internet, and uh, we will uh, catch you next week. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. So we got uh, Strikers, Turtles, uh, and then we played, what, Pac-Man 256. Did we really, did we play anything else? I mean, we tried playing other stuff. We played one more game, didn't we? Yeah, what did we play first? We played 256 first, and then we switched to another game. Well, I mean, we tried playing... Yeah, we tried playing on my internet, and it was yeah. just like, nope. We tried playing <laughs> a couple games. Hold on, I can just pull up Steam, and it'll show what I last played. That makes more sense, because I was going to ask you guys, like, oh, if you guys were all, like, hanging out, why didn't you play Pac-Man Versus? But you didn't know that it was on that Pac-Man arcade thing, so that makes more sense now. Yeah, we did yeah, everything yeah, we were... through, uh, whatchamacallit steam remote play yeah. oh that's one cool. person has to own the game so yeah it'll be kind of fun to just talk about even just that yeah I, I actually don't know a lot about how that works i've never tried that yeah i didn't really know like i ended up just seeing like i had a few people like kind of nudge me that have like that i've checked out their game and like it's, i'm like oh i haven't, haven't had a chance to play multiplayer and like oh it's steam remote play you can play with anyone and i'm like oh yeah yeah whatever right not whatever but like, i'll get around to it eventually and then yeah it <laughs> didn't work that great with my internet but once we switched to mikey's uh we were in better shape that's sweet. Well, um, this is interesting. It, uh, because it wasn't in my thing. Oh, because, yeah, because Mikey was the one, like, playing it. Yeah, group chat. What the fuck did we play? We played I know, another we game. Did play, I'm looking at... It wasn't oh, Stick shit. Fight. <laughs> he was talking about Stick Fight. Um, And we fuck. didn't play that. No, because it's it not in the chat because we got invited. Fuck, what did we yeah, play? Too much, uh, too much fun by that point to uh to Well, recollect. I didn't even... 
I like specifically wrote down <laughs> Pac Man two fifty six, but not. And I don't think it was that forgettable. Like I don't. I don't remember like ending on a note where we're like, "Well, that game sucks," and right. you know, like, uh, "See you guys." You know, this is driving me nuts because then I. Like, I know. I, I can't like, think about anything else. I played Ruins of Mitrium on my own. Ooh. Um, just a little bit nice uh, yeah and then i downloaded and started playing street fighter 4 because we had talked <laughs> about that uh, okay fuck what was okay it? it is it is like legit driving me crazy is, that i can't think of what game it is was it competitive was it cooperative i feel like it was co-op okay i'm going what was did we talk about it in our group ch- this is driving me fucking. Nuts. I think it might just be gone, man. I re- I really don't remember. But uh, but anyways, for the multiplayer stuff, so we got turtles, we got strikers, we got two fifty six, and then we got whatever this mystery game is. The golf game. Oh yeah, <laughs> no wonder. No friend. wonder I fucking. No, forgot. yeah, that was the most like <laughs> slide off your brain game. <laughs> like it's like a putt putt like. Putt putt for dummies, basically, yeah, okay. <laughs> for lack of a better expression. It was, it was kind of a good game to like just literally Turn to just shoot the off. shit and like. Yes, we I, clearly not... we were only thinking about the conversation and not the game at all. Yeah, makes sense. Holy, it shit. was pretty what bad. Was it, was it even like golf with friends? Golf yeah, because it's friends. on. Ga- it's also on Game Pass. I saw it when I was Fuck. scrolling today, golf. and I felt I felt kind of bad because I was like, "Man, who would play this game?" And then Mikey was like, "Well, my buddy Dave <laughs> gifted <laughs> it to me. Like I, that's who plays it all the time with Kevin, his friends." Kevin, I was like, God there are thirty four thousand very positive reviews. <laughs> Um, okay, I thought I thought you were gonna say holes. So, <laughs> well, I mean, there are so many like bonus packs, but holy well, like there's probably user created stuff. I definitely heard mod. of people playing that before. Like, I feel like a long time ago, though. That's certainly not a new game. I don't think. It, no, it didn't feel like it. Yeah. Well, I it mean, it was kind of, like but like, <laughs> but it was like it kind of had the feeling of like because I feel like that for a while, at least on that, maybe it was on Idle Thumbs or on one of the podcasts I used to listen to, they would like talk about playing Uno online a lot. Sure. And I think that felt like it was definitely for not, you know, it wasn't for playing Uno. It was like for, oh, I'm just hanging out on Xbox Live chatting with my friend. It was one of the first games you could play on there and it was free. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, that's why that was a moment in time. Yeah, and you could use your stupid uh, webcam thing, and a lot of people had those at that time. Yeah, because I think it did it come with it. No, I don't. I was gonna say, did it come with the 360? Because I kind of feel like I had one, but I don't. I haven't seen it laying around. It probably came with Xbox Live at the very least. Oh, or you could get like that kit, like because yeah, we had all those yeah. different setups at Best Buy, like the three month pack with the headset, right. and the Camera. 